This is a page from a book called The American Practical Navigator, written by Nathaniel Bowditch, which explains how to calculate celestial navigation. Allow me to read a short section. The computed altitude, hc, is calculated using the basic formula for solution of the undivided navigational triangle, in which h is the altitude to be computed, hc, L is the latitude of the assumed position, D, is the declination of the celestial body, and LHA is the local hour angle of the body. Meridian angle T can be substituted for LHA in the basic formula restated in terms of the inverse trigonometric function. What the heck? Why is this so complicated? To calculate a line of position that you are on, you need two things. A sight on a celestial body, often the sun, and the time you took that site. That's it. Two things. Why do they make it so complicated with all the odd terms and difficult steps? I've taken several celestial courses and done well in them. I plotted my position aboard for several years accurately. I've read several books and watched several videos on the subject. I even own two nice sextants. And I never really had any idea what I was actually doing. I just followed the steps from some book and ended up inexplicably with an answer to my position. I've struggled with this for years and could never find a decent answer. Again, for a fairly accurate line of position that you were on at sea, you need two things. The sight of a celestial body and the correct time. So how come it is so complicated? Books are written, classes are held, videos are created, and still most of us don't really know what we are doing or why. Frankly, most of us just give up on the idea of ever really knowing what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to explain it in very simple, normal person terms and show you what celestial navigation really is. Your line of position is found by solving a part of two different triangles. Both are on the Earth. Actually, one is on the Earth and one is partially in the Earth. Okay, here you are. You're this little blinking boat off Africa. And then here is the sun. It's this yellow dot just north of Puerto Rico at the moment you take your sight of it. There is an imaginary line from you to the sun. If you knew exactly how long that line is and its exact compass heading to you, you would know where you are. But you don't. There's also an imaginary line from the sun to the North Pole and an imaginary line from you to the North Pole. This creates the celestial triangle that we hear about so often. It's just a triangle. Okay, you've created this triangle. You assume your position here because you have a general idea where you are. And you know the position of the sun the moment you took the sight from the nautical almanac. and you always know the position of the North Pole, it never moves. Each of these positions have a latitude and a longitude, and you know that the sun moves 15 degrees across the Earth for every hour. On this triangle, you know three parts. Your distance from the North Pole, a very simple calculation of your latitude minus 90 times 60 is your distance in miles. The same is true for the sun. Its latitude minus 90 times 60 is its distance from the North Pole. Because you know both longitudes, you also know how many degrees the sun has traveled from your longitude to its present longitude. That's the angle at the top of the triangle. In math terms, you now have a triangle where you know two sides and the angle between them. You can use math to find the length of the side between you and the sun and the angle or compass heading from you to the sun. This is all you need to find out. But remember, this was done using an assumed position so we know our answers will be wrong, but not by much. The error will be close enough to plot on a sheet of paper. We took a second sight of the sun, and that sight creates a second triangle. In this triangle, we measure the angle from our horizon to the sun. The celestial people call that HS, height read by sextant. So I'll call it the HS2, but I have to be careful not to lean too far toward the dark side. 
light lines coming to the Earth from celestial bodies are always parallel to each other. So these red lines are parallel to each other. I've also drawn another green line parallel to my green horizon line and run it through the center of the Earth. If you remember 10th grade math, lines that are parallel have angles that are the same here and here. This angle is 90 degrees. So if I subtract my HS from it, I get this angle, the orange one. So again, I can multiply that angle by 60 and get the length of the side of the triangle from me to the sun. Remember, on Earth, angles are the same as distance. One degree equals 60 miles. This orange line here is the exact same side as the orange one in the previous triangle. This is the actual distance from me to the sun. Now I know exactly how long this side is, and I can compare it to the answer I got using the celestial tables knowing that my site measurement is correct. There will be a difference in the lengths of the two triangles. That difference is how far I actually am from where I thought I was, my assumed position, the dark side again. The angle we got from the tables tells me approximately which direction I am from the sun, so now I can draw my line of position perpendicular to that line. I am somewhere on that line. Do it all again later while advancing my LOP, dark side again, and I know where I am within a few miles. Ta-da! That's what celestial navigation really is and how it actually works.